the yearly national shopping festival, Korea Sale Festa has always been mired in controversy. To find out why, KDI conducted an analysis based on the assumption that the issue surrounding the festival stems from the type of transaction that occurs between retailers and suppliers. In general, convenience stores and large retail chains deal primarily in direct purchases and essential items such as food and daily necessities. In this type of transaction, the retailer first purchases the goods and then sells them at a profit. And because the goods were initially bought, the sale and inventory management of these goods lies solely with the retailer. In online and home shopping, transactions are mainly done through consignment sales, which involves the supplier granting the retailer the rights to sell its goods. Once the goods are sold, the retailer remits the proceeds from the sale to the supplier after taking the sales fee. As for department stores and outlet malls, because the majority of items sold are seasonal and trend-sensitive, for example, clothing and cosmetics, there is a high share of store leases and purchases under special contract. Under a store lease, tenants rent store space from the retailer who in turn receives a percentage of the proceeds as rent. Meanwhile, special contract purchases combine all three of the affirmation transactions, direct purchasing, consignment sales, and store leases. Specifically, the goods are bought on credit by the retailers but sold by the suppliers. The retailers then remit the proceeds as payment, minus a commission, and return any unsold good to the supplier. So what determines the type of transaction? A survey of 1,000 suppliers found that the share of direct purchasing declined when the suppliers could not trust the retailer, or when extra investments like professional salespeople and interior decoration were needed in the store. Also, the more retail partners a supplier had, and the more power a supplier had in determining the type of transaction, the more direct purchases were selected. On the other hand, if the margin and commission rates are set by the retailer, in other words, if there is a significant gap in bargaining power, the share of direct purchases becomes notably low. Then how does the type of transaction affect supplier sales? It was found that supplier sales dropped 260 million won or 1.8% of the average on a 1 percentage point increase in special contract purchases. Other transaction types had no meaningful impact. To discover why, an examination was conducted into the profit distribution between retailer and supplier. It was found that for every 1 million won increase in sales, retailers made 19,000 won more under direct purchase contracts and over 25,000 won more under special contract purchases. Generally, we would assume that the sales fee under direct purchases would be higher as the retailer is responsible for both sales and inventory management. So why is it higher under special contract purchases when the supplier shoulders this burden? When determining the type of transaction, the probability of a direct purchase contract becomes higher if the supplier has more bargaining power. On the other hand, if this power leans towards the supplier, it is highly possible that transactions will proceed under a special contract. Essentially, it is the gap in bargaining power that decides the sales fee and margin rate. Given the fact that the loss retailers suffer in their sales under a special contract is caused by an imbalance of bargaining power, weren't there any unfair trade practices? The results of an analysis reveal that unfair trade practices are at least two to three times more common in special contract purchases compared to other types of transaction. Special contract purchases are tied to diminished sales as the imposition of disadvantages under this type of transaction is especially widespread. For example, lowering the prices of supplied goods or increasing the sales fee in the middle of the contract period. 정부가 직권 조사나 서면 실태 조사를 할때 거래 이용의 관점에서 법 위반 혐의들을 파악하는 것이 효율적일 수 있습니다. 그렇게 되도록 조사의 항목이나 내용을 보완해야 합니다. 그리고 특약 매입 거래에서 부당성을 심사할 때 계약이 부당하게 변경되지는 않았는가? 
이 부분도 중요한 기준으로 포함될 필요가 있습니다. 특약 매입에서 불거지는 이 부당 행위들 때문에 직매입을 유도하는 정책들이 나올 수 있는데요. 거래 이용에 직접적으로 개입을 하기보다는 납품대금 조정 협의권과 같이 협상력 격차를 줄이는 방향으로 정책들을 운영하는 것이 바람직합니다.